Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make puddles in Blender 2.6. So, um, this is a final render. We've got the ground with the puddle on, and something that's quite interesting is this ground has got a bump map on it, but the puddle uh, isn't affected by that. I'm going to teach you how to achieve that effect um, in the tutorial. Also, um, something that helps with puddles is that the ground is slightly reflective and quite shiny and that really just helps the puddle sort of blend in with the scene and not look too ridiculous just sitting there because the floor looks wet as though it's been raining not completely dry with a puddle in the middle um, okay so that's the final render if I just get out of that um, we've got quite a few textures we've got the ground color the puddle the puddle dampness uh, it's not clicking on any of them um, the stencil and the uh, ground reflection map and the ground bump map um, okay so I'm going to cover all of those in this tutorial so let's begin so I start with well I'll start by making a new scene and we're just going to add a plane um, although this method does work with practically any shape um, yeah any shape will do but we're gonna add a plane because that's the logical shape for making puddles and let's just save this as file like that okay so the first thing we're gonna do is apply a texture to this so first of all we're gonna add a new material and we're gonna call this ground like that and then um, we're actually gonna leave it at that we're going to pull out this um, oh, I'm going to make a new window by dragging this top right thing here these sort of three lines if you just drag them out you can make a new window um, set this to UV image editor and um, we're going to make a new image so if we press new we're going to make this 2000 by 2000 the higher you make these numbers the more detailed the puddle will look but you know I'm probably um, you know making a bit too high with 2000 by 2000 and the name of this is going to be puddle um, yeah puddle uh, I'm going to leave the color at black that's quite important um, okay so we're going to press ok and uh, first thing we're going to want to do is go to image save as image and then textures I'm going to put this as puddle map like that okay so save and if you just zoom out of the image you can see we've got a fairly uh, big square and um, if you press alt z on the um, uh, while your mouse is in 3d view we're going to go into texture view and then if we press in top view of the plane that's quite important press tab then press u project from view and then just scale this up and you'd already see we're still in textured mode or texture viewing but it's gone completely black that's because we are just looking at this texture so if we go to texture paint we'll now be able to paint on the texture so I'll just put a blob there you can see that's now appeared on our plane or on our image however puddles are never nice smooth blobs like that they sort of uh, have these weird patterns to them and it's all very weird so we're not going. We're going to, sorry, we're going to remove that blob there, and we're just going to come down to texture. We're going to add a new texture, and this is going to be puddle uh, brush like that. And um, yeah, that's it. Now, when we put a simple blob there, you can see we've now got this cloud texture showing up. Okay, so that's all very well and good, but um, in fact, yeah, if I leave just put a blob there and then let's say I want to paint some more of the puddle and put another blob there you can see that it's not really getting any brighter it's just putting some more texture in the way and that's not what we want we want um, the texture to sort of build up on top of each other and get brighter and the way we do that is set that to add so now if we just save we can start painting our puddles I'm going to put one blob there and then another one there and you can see in between them it's clearer in this view you can see it's getting brighter and yeah that's what this is where our puddle is going to be so just kind of sort of put some 
just a few blobs here just to sort of make the um, general outline because it takes time whoops that one smudged yeah don't click and drag just do single clicks because otherwise um, it has this weird blurry effect okay so that's the general shape for our puddle um, but now I'm just going to go purely into this window just put your mouse over and press shift space there's another hotkey but I don't remember what it is if you just come down here to this picture of brush just click on that and you can start painting in the texture like that Oops, wrong thing you can press T so, sorry not T N and that will bring up the um, the sort of texture options I'm gonna want to increase the radius to about 150 um, yeah that's about the right size just maybe zoom in a bit wait hang on uh, I don't know the brush needs to be changing size as we zoom in and out. Basically, we're just going to want to just put a few uh, blobs of this texture everywhere, and you know, we're all with single clicks. Remember, because uh, otherwise you'll get this sort of weird, nasty effect there. Don't know what to call this. It. Uh, it just sort of makes a blurry line, and that's not what we're wanting. So. Um, if we just uh, we're gonna want to make sure that the center of the puddle is completely white, because otherwise uh, the reflection won't show up too well. Uh, well, won't show up realistic anyway. Okay, so um, that's sort of what we've got there. Um, another thing is that puddles sort of fade out a bit more, so we're just going to want to decrease the strength to 0.1 and just um, make another sort of very mild outline around the outside of the puddle like that and that just really it just gets a very small amount of detail to the outside like that okay so maybe just another small layer of that just on the sort of inside of the outside if that makes sense I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you know I need to save time. Okay, so there we go. We've got that nice puddle now. Um, if we press Alt S, we can then save over that image. And the reason why we're doing that is this image needs to be saved. So if Blender crashes, it doesn't have to. You know, basically, it will just forget this image ever existed, and we're going to have to remake it. But if we save it, then it will be um, you know as an actual file, and we can just load it back up again. So. We're going to come out of texture paint mode, we're done with that. Uh, so just come down here, choose object mode, and then you can grab these, uh, this top right thing again, and just click, and then drag inwards. In fact, yeah, just drag inwards, and then it will just remove the window there. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can actually just get our camera in a good position, like that. Um, yeah, just make sure that it's covering all of the plane there we go maybe should have repositioned that puddle but oh well um, so now that we've done that if we come out of texture view because it's pointless we can go to our texture and then add that texture in and it's going to be image or movie open and then it'll be the textures the puddle map like that and then if we come down to coordinates, we're going to set that to UV. And then UV there. Okay, um, so now that we've done that, we're going to want to uncheck color. We're going to want to go to RGB to intensity. And in fact, no, we do want color for this. Uh, in fact, no, we don't. RGB to intensity. We're going to set this to black, so that's 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to want uh, to make this multiply like that. And then if we look at our material as a plane, then oh dear, that something went wrong. If we do have the color check like that, um, oh dear, right, yeah, okay. Um, oh wait, no, sorry, it's fine. Don't worry. I've just remembered. If we just check negative then um, yeah that's looking good and then we've got a multiply so things are looking good so far when it comes to the puddle right then however we need to do some more we just call this puddle dampness 
something like that. We need to have a ground texture. I just remembered that, although I should have added that in first. We're going to make a new uh, texture. This is going to be called ground col, like that. And we're going to set this to image your movie. And we're going to open up a ground texture. Um, I think I used this one. We're going to open it up and place that on top of the puddle dampness and then if we come down to image mapping I'm just going to repeat it along the x-axis twice and along the y-axis twice because this is a seamless image so we can do that okay so that's all good if we render this you're going to see that we've got this ground texture and we've got this big black blob and that's not looking too good so we're going to need to fix that by making the puddle reflective and I'll tell you how to do that. But first of all, we need to remove that specularity. Right. Um, if we go to our puddle dampness, well, go to the next texture. We're going to want to choose the puddle dampness again, but tick, the, oh sorry, uh, click on this two, and that will then make its own separate texture. And I'm going to want to call this puddle like that. And going to give it the same coordinates, so it's going to be UV, so under mapping, coordinates, UV, and that's just put it there. We're going to want to, uh, under influence, uncheck color and tick ray mirror, and that's not done anything yet, but I'll tell you how to make it do something in a bit. But we're going to set the contrast to 5 as well, um, just like that. And then over in the materials, we're going to want to... Sorry, we're going to want to go down and tick mirror, and now, oh, hang on, I do, oh wait, yeah, sorry, um, go to influence, and check RGB to intensity, and then, there we go, you can now see that we've got our, uh, puddle reflecting stuff, well, yes, yeah, reflecting stuff, um, but first of all, if we're going to want to give this a render, we're going to want to put give the world a texture. So just go to the world and then go to the textures, and then the world b should be selected there. Or you could just go to any texture thing and just sh click on that. Um, but yes, yeah. so we're going to make a new texture. I'm going to call this Sky Carl, like that. Image your movie. And then tick Horizon, I'm going to open up um, random image of some sort. Is something that will fill up the scene. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, hmm. I don't remember which one I used. We can use this though. That's a nice little image. And if we go to the world section and just tick paper sky, we can then, um, yeah, if we render this now, we should then have some nice reflections in our puddle. Uh, there we go. When it decides to actually render the full thing. Yeah, you can see the puddle is now reflecting that image. Although it's kind of large reflections. And it's looking a bit funny. But um, yeah, it's reflecting and we've got this sort of dark outline. Uh, we need to give this some proper lighting though because it's kind of dark. So... If we just, yeah, I'm actually just going to select a different world um, uh, color. Where is it? Uh, yeah. And let's see. I just want like a simple sort of forest. Oh, that looks good. Um, now let's have this one. And if we tick open image, then uh, that's going to be a better reflection because it would just look less stupid and yeah so we're not going to bother rendering that again oh uh, there's no need to and it just wastes time so yeah we can now get on with the lighting as i said so just uh, get this lamp make it a sun lamp make it slightly yellow 1.5 as the energy and just rotate it around like that just get a nice angle then duplicate it Rotate it by roughly 40 degrees. Oh, wait, where was it? Yeah. R45. Ah, okay, minus 45. Nah, don't bother then. Just so long as we're sort of getting um, 
it in the sort of opposite direction actually that yeah that looked good so also rotate it like that there we go and we're going to set this to 0.9 energy with a sort of blue color maybe a bit stronger blue with that okay so that'll just make the scene look a bit better oh uh, uncheck specular with the sky lamp th this the blue one um, because basically the way shadows work is that they're blue because the sky um, gives them tons of light then that makes them blue okay so uh, yeah then the sun is yellow slightly for well, obvious reasons the sun is yellow so if I just move the plane actually just a bit so that the camera is definitely on it all um, we can now carry on with the textures so if we go to the texture view like that we're going to want to yeah give this thing a bump map so we're going to just give this another puddle dampness texture and then hit that two to make its own separate thing again call this stencil Ooh, that's bad spelling there we go stencil and with this we're going to give it the same mapping obviously so uv then when it decides to uh, collapse that there we go we're going to want to uncheck color we're going to go to finally load so go rgb to intensity negative and it's not actually clicking on anything there we go negative and stencil oops there we go and now uh, if we put another ground color here like that if we give it a bump map so in fact wait no we're going to want to 